Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Um, today is something a little bit different. I wanted to, because I've been meaning to talk about chronic fatigue for a while now, um, but I've just never figured out the right way to do it, the right, um, like how to make the video. Like, do I, yeah, anyway, we won't go into that. Um, but you know, over the course of me being sick, I've written down a couple of things and yeah, I just wanted to share them. This is not supposed to be a pity me video, okay? I get enough of that already from myself, so I don't need that. It's, it's an uh, awareness video. I just want to show, try and give awareness to people and, um... Yeah, and so that other kids with chronic fatigue who are young like me um, can feel related to. I wrote sort of an analogy to what chronic fatigue is like because mo lots of people find it really hard to describe what it's like or try and explain to people. So chronic fatigue is like trying to listen to someone who has an extremely thick accent, talks super fast, has a lisp, a lazy eye and is trying to tell you something vital to your well-being in an airport while he's eating breakfast. Also you've had no sleep for three days, you have pins and needles in both legs that you can't acknowledge, your face is sticky and there's a headache starting behind your eyes. That is my perception of what it's like in words and you know my flowy poetic way that I write stuff <coughs> sorry okay now this these are just some things that um, people with chronic fatigue and depression don't talk about but it happens and they think about it and they I guess maybe wonder if other people have it, but they're not sure. Just some little things that I've noticed that probably aren't normal or aren't um, very helpful for your mental stability. I don't know. Just take what you can from it. The things people with chronic fatigue and depression ignore about life. You sweat through your PJs at night and your sheets and undies get thin and faded. So you wear less at night. You buy nice big clothes to hide the fact that your bed is uncomfortable. There's no position that feels right. There's no easy way to fall asleep. No matter how tired you are, there's always something keeping you awake. One minute you're too hot and out of breath cooking pancakes and then you can't get warm in bed with all your clothes on. You decide to go out and regret it as you open the car door. You have 12 tabs open in your browser with different illnesses you have symptoms for. You push your glands around in your neck wondering if you'll be sicker tomorrow. You say, sounds good when it doesn't. You ignore event requests on Facebook because you know you won't be going anyway. You talk to strangers when you should just block them online because you're lonely and they don't know you're sick in bed. Some people don't realise that the hardest parts about being unwell are often the little things. Walking past a mirror and thinking to yourself, my hair looks really cute like that, but right before you go to bed. Looking at food on Instagram and realising it takes three hours to make and you can only spare two at best. Messaging people, we should totally catch up soon, let me know when you're free, knowing you probably won't catch up for, to, until four months later because you're not mentally free. Trying to get people to interact with you on social media when you know half the ideas they have you will never do. You know, I know lots of um, family members of people who are sick or depressed don't really want to know about stuff. They feel bad when they hear about it but the person just wants you to accept it and treat them normally. We don't need pity, we don't need, you know, baby talk and oh are you okay and how are you today and are you getting better. We don't need that. We can sort that 
out on our own with our doctors and people close to us who help us with that, like parents. Extended family and friends, we just need you to be normal so we feel normal. Like, that's, that's kind of what I get. And I know lots of people don't want to hear that kind of stuff because it makes them feel awkward and it makes them feel like bad and they should be doing more but that's what we feel too like it's no different no different at all and really when we say stuff like that it's more for the people who are like us that need assurance that it's not just them and they're not just faking it and they're not just making up some illness it's not really for people in the close group that we have. Like they, I guess it's good for them to hear it as well, but that's not, we don't have that specific group of people in mind when we do this real talk and stuff like that. So that is all I have for this video. I am currently working on writing some more stuff um, about chronic fatigue and depression and other things. So I uh, might have a couple more of those videos coming out soon. Um, I think I'm going to title them Real Talk so then you can find them easily. If you want to message me with questions about chronic fatigue or some of the things I talked about or you just want to chat, hit me up. All my social media links are below. I prefer talking on Messenger just because it's easier, if that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, hope you all stay well. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!